So, as we all know, we need biomarkers, not because they are really necessary, but because they could complement the clinical information that we get every day from the clinical status of our patient. And the problem is that the stronger is that we need the link between the biomarker and the clinical course of action to be the strong, the, the, as stronger as possible in order it to be useful. Super has been widely studied in the general population and here I just chose some of the studied, not because they are the most important, but because first of all they make part of super history and because they can show that super has been used or has been found to be useful in different kinds of population. The problem is that the ICU is a complex setting for biomarkers. First of all, there are high, uh, big high CU and small ICU settings. Patients are usually unselected. They can be medical, surgical, or trauma patients. Most of them may have uh, one single organ dysfunction, but unfortunately, multiple organ dysfunction is uh, often present. We do not know how big is the interaction between a biomarker and the drugs that we gave give to our patients. We are not so aware of the interaction between biomarkers and immunodeficit if they are intrinsic in the patient or if they are um, determined by the drugs that we give to the patients. Patients are often hypo or mal uh, suffering from hypo or malnutrition. And what is becoming more interesting in the past uh, five, ten years is the fact that the external assistance devices that we more and more use in the ICU, ECMO for instance, are equipped with filters and there are not so many information in literature about how filters are interacting with biomarkers in general. So I tried to make just an overview, to sum up, I'm an intensivist, I work in an ICU, as some of you here in the room, and our patients are made by different organs. So do we consider organ by organ, or may we just have an overview complete of the patient? I decided to try, first of all, to make a choice of different organs. So, as Marcus and his student has already shown you, super was studied for lung disease. And in this case, it was a burn injury and inhalation trauma. And when evaluating, is it me? Yeah, no. Uh, when evaluating the systemic diagnostic power or the um, lung leverage level of super as a diagnostic power, there was a different. Super in the systemic circulation is different in his power from super in the lung circulation. And the same you can see in the diagnostic rock curve. When evaluating the pulmonary super level and the systemic super level in their capacity of determining the mechanical ventilation time, there, there is a difference. So it is not the same thing if it is measured in the circulation or in the lung. And the, the team, Marcus' team, was able to say, first of all, it was the first study that told us that super can be detected in the lung. And in the lung, it is possible to use this marker in order to make the diagnosis of an injury, and it was able to correlate with the inflammatory activity and the coagulation activity. But it was not prognostic. What was prognostic was the systemic super levels, because it was able to predict the duration of mechanical ventilation and the duration of the ICU stay. So this is what we know for the lung right now. When we go to the heart, it's just next to it. So there is a very nice paper by Lindberg uh, in the American Journal of Cardiology. So they evaluated 296 patients with an ST segment elevation, myocardial infarction, that were admitted for a primary PCI. So I don't know uh, if uh, um, I think Every ICU is different. There are some ICU that admit cardiac patients, some others do not. But in any case, as you can see from the first slide, this one, super is stable. 
the, tw the first 24 hours. It cannot make diagnosis. It cannot be used to say this patient is having a myocardial infarction. And usually we have other biomarkers and clinical evidence that can help us. But when evaluating the, not only the fact if the patient is going to survive or not, I hope that every good doctor is able to say if a patient with a, an, an ongoing myocardial infarction is uh, severe or not. But what is nice, I, I think, what was nice in this paper is the fact to predict if a patient was at risk of a recurrent episode. And they stratified patients using quartiles, and this is quite uh, often used in literature about super. And even if there was a difference in the uh, four quartile chosen, what was nice was when the authors decided to pull the first three quartiles and the fourth one, which is from 5.65 to 16.52 nanogram per milliliter. So a wide range, but with a cutoff value, which is quite high. And then we go back to the paper that we have seen, I suppose, <coughs> if everybody remember it, quite often during these days, these two days, about the liver. It is not because it was only on ICU patients with liver disease, but it is because, first of all, Super was able to detect the fact that the patient is a patient. This we all know. What is nice is that De detecting cirrhosis, but what was important was the level of fibrosis and the presence of cirrhosis. But what was, uh, I, I think, and the authors underlined it also interesting, was the fact that to put into evidence the presence of an alcoholic etiology of the liver disease. And this was independent, even if it was uh, uh, where is my pointer? Here. Even if it was uh, analyzed, uh, taking uh, liver function into account and considering uh, the different quartile, the different levels of super, there was clearly, for instance, here, a difference uh, in the transplant free day survival between having uh, a super cutoff value before or higher than nine. And why am I putting it into light? Because the levels of super that I will try to, to show you mm, slide by slide uh, is increasing uh, from what you have seen up to now. So there was a run up regulation of super in patients with an alcoholic origin of liver disease. A lack, of, and we lack for an ethanol marker of disease. But the problem is that we do not know if a super is involved in the liver pathology or if it could be a target for the therapy. We go to the brain, so there are not so many studied about, uh, studies about uh, how to measure and when to measure super in the uh, cerebrospinal fluid. This study evaluated the presence of uh, um, meningitis, encephalitis, or lymphocytic meningitis. And as you can see, there was a difference. The problem is that it was not recommended for diagnosis, but, it could be, but there was an association with fatal outcome, so prognosis again. And I think that most of you have seen this nice picture, considering the involvement of super in the generation of renal glomerulosclerosis. So probably being not only the um, witness of something which is happening, but being an actor of a renal uh, disease. And the problem is that most of our patients come to the ICU because they are septic. And literature is becoming more and more rich about sepsis and the use of super. And it was, if we consider that sepsis is the host response to an infection, everything which is considering an infection should be taken into account when evaluating sepsis. And all papers are clearly stating that there is higher level of super when an infection is ongoing and that super levels are higher when fatality is present. And as you can see, the, 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 the papers are becoming more and more um, generous about this subject. 
But what is the problem? Is super able to help me as a clinician to say that the patient has an infection? Do I really need super to say it? Indeed, unfortunately, it is not able to tell us that there is an infection. It is able to tell us that the patient with the infection will be more severe than another one. In this case, bacteremia, a level of super higher than 11 was associated with hypotension, so severe sepsis or septic shock if we consider the guidelines and with a higher SOFA score. So it could be considered as a predictor of fatality. In this paper that you have all seen, the same thing. First of all, patients were, had higher super level. The presence of sepsis uh, was associated with a higher level of super. And when evaluating, first of all, the sepsis predicted value, so the diagnostic power here, it was not higher than other biomarkers. And the authors concluded that it was necessary to have further studies for it. In the study that we made, the same thing. Septic patients, even if they are ICU patients, they have higher super levels, both if they are medical and if they are surgical. And the level of soup, the, the, the percentage of pe people suffering from, with sepsis is higher if we consider different uh, range of super levels. And again, the levels of super are higher if we consider the severity of sepsis, so the degree of organ dysfunction. But here again, I cannot consider it as a tool to help me to make a diagnosis. And what about mortality? This, even if it is not the only one, is the one that I prefer, I, I have to agree, uh, to, to, to admit. It is a paper by a great group with a large cohort of patients. Unfortunately, here again, they use a plasma bank of samples, but they found that, that first of all, super, a very high super uh, value of area under the curve. Mm -hmm. But what was interested, and I envied them a little bit because I wasn't able to have the same results in my cohort, is the fact that dividing the patients uh, in uh, as regards to the Apache score and uh, the super level, they were able to make four different groups. And I think that this image is wonderful. I don't know if it will be repeatable, if uh, there will be other groups that will be able to make the same sort of Kaplan-Mayer curve about with, like them. But this is, I, I think it's quite, uh, quite appealing, quite interesting. Why I say that? Because the problem is that we do not have, we have interesting data in uh, prognostication of mortality in septic patient or in ICU patients, not as bi big, as beautiful as the Greek ones. And uh, if we consider this one, again, when super is uh, coupled with uh, age, it is able to have an area under the curve for predicting mortality of 0.77, which is not low at all. And again, the, the work by Alexander, the survival was clearly different in patients having high level of super and having low level of super. And in this rock curve, you can see that there is a clear difference in ICU survival if you consider ICU survival or overall survival. So it can be considered a strong and robust marker of mortality risk in ICU patients, a general ICU cohort. And we found the same thing. The people that die are more often present in the range of super levels that are more than 5.5. Please remember what I told you before about the range. But we have a mortality at 29, so nearly, nearly 30% when super levels are above 10.5. And again, the predictive curve of mortality is higher as a biomarker. You have always to remember that super is just a molecule, is a biomarker. It is not a complex algorithm as the Apache 2 score, the SAP score, the SOFA score are. It is just a molecule that can be dosed and that can try to predict something. And he is able to do it. And when evaluating, so the uh, general population, we can use 6.15 nanogram per milliliter. When you evaluate uh, a sepsis cohort, we get to, to a value of super, which is above 10, as I told you before. 
So this overview, it is not to give you the answer because unfortunately I don't have it yet. But what I can say is first of all that in the complexity of the ICU, it seems that Super is able to highlight the severity of the patients that are present in our cohort. So it can make a prognostication. But there are some un questions that are unanswered. First of all, is it high in ICU patients or in severe patients because it is a witness? because it participates to the mechanism of sepsis and critical illness in general, and so it results in high mortality? Or is it just a witness, and so it could be used as a target for treatment? And again, if we consider that it is very sensitive and very stable, why are we not able to have right now a clear answer if we should use it daily in the ICU? And on this basis, base, I think that, as Marco said and somebody else said before, we really need a large trial. I think that we need a multicentric trial perspective, but it should be Clinic, clinical decision should be super based. I do not agree with Marcus about the potential of reducing the length of treatment because all the studies are showing that super is quite stable during treatment for many days. But I think that it could help us to put our attention to another organ or to another situation that probably is passing under scene but I really think that it is necessary to do something prospective and blinded, because otherwise we are just going on retrospective, usually on plasma bank, and we are not making decision, and we are not seeing if there is a difference in making a decision by using this biomarker. And I thank you.